Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've already seen my introduction to Cho Cho, my chubby frog, then you're pretty well ready for this video because their enclosures are a little bit similar and I got them on the same day. So I did mention Gamakichi, my tomato frog, who you'll see in this video a lot in my video about Cho Cho. If you want to watch Cho Cho's video first, I'll include it up here and in the links below. Much like Cho Cho's video, I'm going to talk about where I got Gamakichi from and how I named him, that sort of thing while playing clips of me welcoming him home and different pictures and photos of him eating and things like that. Just so that, you know, you guys aren't staring at my face for all this time when you could be looking at Gamakichi. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, back in, oh god, it must have been like 2018, I don't know, probably towards the end of 2018, I mentioned that I had been looking for a tomato frog. And as you know, I don't like to buy from breeders. I like to get frogs and other animals from situations of rehoming because first and foremost, I do like to operate as a sanctuary. So a lot of my animals here have special needs, uh, especially my leopard geckos. Um, but all the other animals come from situations of rescue, rehoming, and adoption. So I would really prefer not to buy from a breeder most of the time and that goes for the tomato frog that I wanted to get as well. I was very fortunate that one of my followers on Instagram reached out to me and said, hey, I've been looking to rehome my tomato frog and I'd really like to rehome my tomato frog to you. And I was taken aback and this person, his name is Tim, I'll include his Instagram right here on the screen so you guys can follow him. He has a lovely variety of animals, especially amphibians and uh, he's been nothing but just the kindest person and like the most helpful and the most patient because we did have to wait a long time before shipping my tomato frog Gamakichi because of the, the winter weather. So Gamakichi couldn't be shipped until the weather was above 40 degrees at night. I'm pretty sure it was like December. I'll include the date on the screen because I have to go check the messages. And of course I was absolutely thrilled because uh, it was a situation that wasn't buying from a breeder. It was someone that I could talk to really regularly to get to know my tomato frog before bringing him home. And I call him a him, by the way. I don't really know if Gamakichi's a girl or boy. Some people have said that it's probably a girl. I'm just going to keep saying him because it doesn't really matter. I'm not trying to breed him or anything. Um, but we had been referring to him as a him, me and his former owner, for a while now. So it just kind of stuck. There was one day, just like Cho Cho's video, there was one day where the shipping was actually going to work out and that was the 9th of April or the 8th of April actually is the day that they shipped out. The 9th is when they arrived. And it's been crazy because like since the 9th of April we've had days where it's been in the 70s and sunny and we've had days where it's snowed. So that's just kind of how Indiana is, especially this time of year. You never really know what you're going to get in terms of weather. And so we really just had to keep an eye on the weather like every single week just kind of like narrow down a day that would be good to send him and it just so happened that I was able to get Gamakichi and Chocho shipped the same day and they arrived the same morning just like 30 minutes apart and so I don't actually have any video of me like opening Gamakichi and bringing him out of the box or anything like that because I was very overwhelmed with also welcoming home Chocho and like making sure they both arrive safe so when I unboxed Gamakichi he actually arrived before Chocho and he went into his quarantine enclosure first. His quarantine enclosure was a five and a half gallon, just because it was one of the enclosures I had on hand. And it was filled with eco earth. It had a small ceramic water dish, big enough for him to get into if he wanted to soak. He also had some driftwood and a fake plant. Now, of course he had like the bare minimum, but he still had enough to engage with for the 21 days that he was in quarantine. But I was really, really excited to move Gamakichi into his permanent enclosure. Especially considering that one night when I went to spray down his enclosure, his quarantine enclosure, he was on top of his plants, like climbing up almost like at the top of the aquarium, which was so cool because I knew that like given the opportunity, a lot of frogs are actually more active than they're described in care sheets. Like a lot of care sheets will say, chubby frogs, pac-man frogs, tomato frogs, these type of similar frogs will just sit in the dirt 
and like maybe that's true for pac-man frogs i can't say i don't have one but chocho and gamakichi have not been like that they have both been very active so i was really excited to move gamakichi into his permanent enclosure which i did just two days ago and it's really great i'm just thrilled and i'm gonna give you guys a look at the enclosure so this is gamakichi's enclosure and he's already in here i put him in his enclosure at night i actually had some issues with the stream area running um it was like leaking out into the drainage layer so i just took everything out that was in the um stream area fixed it with some silicone and then two days later since it was cured and dried and perfect ready to go i tested it worked great filled it back up and so he's actually going in his enclosure a couple days later than chocho -cho, my chubby frog but last night i put gamakichi in here and i wanted to wait until it was daytime so you could have the lights around the enclosure to be able to see it to film the tour so that's what we're gonna do so Gamakichi's in here somewhere. If I could take a couple guesses, he's probably somewhere back there. But I will give a better look tonight, because tonight is actually feeding night for the frogs. So I'll find him somewhere in here tonight. Um, and I'm going to give a run through of all the stuff that's in this enclosure. But it's a pretty similar enclosure to my chubby frogs enclosure. So if you've already seen that video, get prepared to hear some familiar things. So let's go ahead and start down in this corner right here. This is a Habba Hut, much like the one you saw in Chocho's enclosure, and similarly, I sanded the inside of it. So, the outside is like this bark material, but the inside is wood, and it can sometimes be splintery or abrasive, and I obviously don't want that to be touching my amphibian's gentle skin, so I took a sanding belt, a little piece of sandpaper, I don't have it with me right now, but um, I just hand sanded the inside really quick, and then I ran my hands over it to make sure it was nice and smooth wasn't gonna cause any issues with Gamakichi of course I want to make sure he's safe that is paramount um, and then afterwards I placed it in the enclosure as you see here I put a little bit of the um, soil from the enclosure around it just to kind of like nestle it in better so it looks kind of more blended um, and it's facing a different direction than Chocho's just because it fits better with the enclosure that way. Behind the Habba Hut, you will see a large piece, or I mean, it's it's pretty sizable. I don't know if I call it large, but it's a sizable piece of Fluker's Driftwood from Chewy. And the really great thing about this wood is that it has like a like a hole in the middle, similar to Chocho's. Is this hole is a little bit smaller, so I'm wondering if Chocho's pothos will take better. But I planted a pothos, just a couple leaves as you can see in there. It's one strand, one root of pothos, um, into that hole, and I filled it with a bunch of dirt. And it's been thriving, and it's growing up towards the light. And so like it's actually doing well. I don't know if it will live long term. This is just an experiment because uh, some. Some plants are easily uprooted, I and mean, technically all plants are probably easy, easily uprooted by frog species that like to burrow, such as Gamakichi. However, Gamakichi, like, he makes one burrow and he stays in that burrow, so I can probably get away with putting um, a pothos plant or a different plant somewhere else in the enclosure and he won't trample all over it and cause it to have serious problems but I'm gonna wait and see what he does in this enclosure uh, but first before I put any plants in here because I really don't want to buy plants just for him to uproot them or kill them <laughs> so it's very possible that this enclosure will change with the uh, addition of more live plants I'll talk about that on Instagram or Twitter when that happens so if you would like to follow me then you'll get to see that change when it happens the links are down below for my social media oh and the pothos that's planted it's just a regular golden pothos same thing within chocho's enclosure much like chocho's enclosure this background is a cork tile and i cut it so that it was not submerged in the stream area and then i also used silicone and some eco earth or topsoil i can't remember which one it was but i just placed some silicone on the background and then i placed soil on top of that silicone to make it look more natural to give it like a, a better I don't know, feel in the enclosure. Because if you just use regular cork bark, that's fine, it looks great, but this kind of looks like it's more blended together. Let's go ahead and talk about the soil composition. So this enclosure is a little bit different from Chocho's, and there's a good reason for that. As I mentioned, uh, Gamakichi isn't as much of a burrower, and he isn't as destructive as Chocho is, at least he wasn't in his quarantine enclosure. In his quarantine enclosure, he picked one spot to just kind of nestle and burrow into. That may not be the case with this enclosure and if I notice that I'll make the necessary adjustments but this enclosure has the same soil as Chocho so it has 
topsoil, uh, sphagnum moss, it has um, terra firma, and it also has some eco earth. Compared to Chocho, he has more topsoil and more of the terra firma soil than he does eco earth because it had less room to fill because, and I'll zoom down so you can see it, he has a drainage layer. So he has a very short drainage layer and then he has mesh. This mesh is not metal, it's soft and flexible so it should be fine on his skin. If I have any problems with it or noticing like he gets past this sphagnum moss layer, which I'll get to in a minute, then I'll take the mesh and the drainage layer out. It was very quick and easy to take it out of Chocho's and I realized that's the kind of frog she was. So uh, I just wanted to give a drainage layer a try. You can see some condensation here because there's actually a heater in between of the frog enclosures and so it causes condensation. So the drainage layer is just the hydro balls or hydrogen, whatever they're called. And then there's mesh and then there's a thick layer. It doesn't look like it, but there's a thick layer of compact sphagnum moss. This sphagnum moss layer is kind of like a barrier to prevent Gamakichi from really getting into this mesh or this hydrotone if he tries to burrow. So he has soil all the way to here. So he has quite a bit of soil to burrow into and even more in the back because it's built up behind that piece of wood. But this sphagnum moss layer, which again looks thin, but it's really like this thick, um, the purpose of it is to, you know, try and create a barrier that is going to make sure that the soil is held in place and that this is held in place. So I'm really hopeful that it will go well. If not, I will take it out and I'll make a note of that in the description of this video. So if it turns out that he just can't thrive with the drainage layer in here and he really is destructive and able to get down to that, which I like I said, I don't think he'll do, but if he is able to, I will keep that in the um, description so that you guys know so that I'm not like misleading anyone or putting out false information. Similarly to Chocho's enclosure, he has sphagnum moss that is packed. It's it's less packed over here. I think it just got messed up yesterday, uh, but it's packed all the way around. So sphagnum moss goes all the way around his stream area. His stream area is a little bit shorter, but a little bit wider than hers. So generally speaking, it is smaller, but he's a smaller frog and I haven't noticed him in the water as much. So I imagine it, it's not gonna bother him at all. Um, he has the same rocks that Chocho has. They're just um, turtle terrain from Petco. I like the size of them because I don't want them to be uh, any chance of them swallowing the rocks. And then I also included some bamboo just for aesthetics and because bamboo grows in water, like pretty much any water, which is crazy. Um, and there's also a filter. So if you'll notice the water is moving and there's a black cord going up the background. It was straight, but it got messed around. So it's not straight anymore. So I'll have to fix that. The filter is advertised for turtles, but I would not use it for turtles. It is too small. And while it does offer all the biological components of a filter, uh, it is not big enough for a turtle. It's not big enough for many things. I imagine that for very small uh, polydariums or paludariums, however they're pronounced, I imagine that it works for those, but uh, again, I would really only use it for a small area of water or like an animal that doesn't need a lot of filtration. Anyways, it's made by ZooMed and it works perfect for this. It's just this little filter that, you know, helps keep the water movement and helps like suck up any dirt or really at this point in time, it's just gnats that keep dive bombing into the water and dying, which is really frustrating. Um, but if any dirt gets flung in there or anything like that, it, you know, sinks to the bottom and gets sucked up by the filter pretty quick like and it's really convenient. I also forgot to mention, just like in Chocho's video, that this is a bioactive enclosure. So it has um, a cleanup crew and the cleanup crew consists of dwarf tropical white isopods and springtails. And I also have leaf litter in here that you know, um, they, you know, will break down over time to feed them, offer some places to hide. Also, they look good, so aesthetics, yay. That is pretty much his enclosure, down to every explanation I could possibly give you. Um, aside from the heater, which I keep between Chocho and Gamakichi's enclosure, it's really only because the room can get into the, like, really high 60s, so it can be like 68, 69 sometimes in here in the winter, and unfortunately it's still winter here, even though, like, it's almost May. <laughs> which is really annoying. So I have a heater, it's set to 80 and it's in between the enclosures so they both benefit from the heater. Oh, it's on a thermostat set to 80, I should say. Um, but it's just for the time being. These frogs like to be kept in the 70s. They don't like to be hotter than 80. They don't like to be cooler than 70. So this is just like, you know, a way of making sure that they have heat if they need it and if they don't they can get away from it and also it's not hotter than 80 so they're not gonna have any issues with overheating or anything like that. 
Plus the enclosures are plenty big enough that they can get away from the heat if they want to. So I just wanted to make sure that they didn't get too cold, you know what I mean? Better to be safe than sorry. I'll include a clip right here of when I introduced him last night and then I'm also going to record his feeding tonight so I'll include that clip after. But that should be wrapping up the video so you guys are going to see those lovely two bits and then the outro. This is your new home, Bubba. I'll show you guys his face. He's just chilling, covered in dirt. Okay, well since you haven't moved for like 10 minutes, I'm guessing you're gonna move on your own time and I'll check on you tomorrow. <laughs> Good night, Gamakichi. Look who's out and about right now. I just came in the room at nighttime and here he is. Here's little Gamakichi out and about, probably exploring his house. I wonder where you were nesting. I didn't get a chance to look for you. He's probably somewhere back there. You want to eat? Is it food time for you? You're so pretty. He's not reacting at all. That's good news. <laughs> usually puffs up at me so this is good progress I turn the flash on so that you can see yep that's his den I'm gonna get him out to feed him right now He is not happy, but what's funny is this is the first time I've had a front opening enclosure with him and he leapt out of his enclosure when I set him back down. Go in your little hide. I'm not going to bother you anymore, grouchy pants. You're welcome for feeding you. <coughs> Farewell. So it's his second night in this enclosure, I think. Second or third. And I see his little face right here. So cute. Oh, what a lovely boy. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed meeting Gamakichi. I'm actually just now realizing I didn't explain why I named him Gamakichi. So Gamakichi is a toad sage in Naruto and he's actually like Naruto's summon. So like when Naruto wants to summon like a friend to fight on the battlefield, he just summons his toad. Like, you know, um, Sasuke summons a snake and, and Sakura summons the giant slug. Uh, Naruto summons a toad and he's like this giant orangish red toad. Like, he's little when you first meet him, but then he's really big towards the end. It was like a, it was a no brainer. He looks just like him. So other people were recommending this name, including my sister from the moment I showed her a picture of Gamakichi like back in December. She was like, you've got to name him Gamakichi after the toad. And I was like, you're probably right, but I wasn't sure yet. Um, and then as time went on and after having Gamakichi, I was like, yeah, that's the perfect name. Plus there were plenty of other people who were like, yes, name him Gamakichi. So that's why I did. That's where his name comes from, and I hope that that's not like confusing or hard to pronounce to anyone, but I have other animals named Fugaku and Roku and Haku and all of these names that come from anime and sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed meeting him and I really recommend subscribing and hitting the notification bell, not just because I want you to, because we're almost at 10,000, but because I'm going to be introducing Rue next and Rue is a crescent gecko that I have waited for for almost a year, okay? It's a long story and I'll talk about it in her video, 
but she's i'll include a picture right here so you guys can just get a look at her she's a precious angel baby on this earth i am so happy to finally have met her that when i unboxed her i wept like <laughs> I had an ugly crying face, which you'll get to see in the video. It's great. I can't wait. If you're excited to meet Rue, as well as having recently met Chocho and Gamakichi, let me know down below. There are three other animals you'll get to meet in the coming months. It's going to be a little while, um, as you know, a few of them have to be in quarantine for longer than, than typical or longer than I'd like due to some potential health issues, due to me not even having them yet. So the quarantine period hasn't even started. So um, be on the lookout for them. And if you wanna meet them ahead of time, Patreon is the place to do that. I have already shared all three of them on Patreon. You've already met Elia the Leopard Gecko who has MBD, but there are two others that I have not addressed here or any other social media platform aside from Patreon. So if you're interested in meeting them before everyone else, Patreon is the place to do it. And thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.